The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Okay, well, we all, most people here are designers, I believe, and uh, we all know 301 specifications for structural concrete. Um, we currently use 301 for new concrete work, but because this is, this is the area of repair, uh, ACI has decided that we need to have a new separate document on how to design, how to prepare specifications for the 562 uh, document. Um, we're going to base it on 301, of course. In 301, we have five basic sections. They are basic, the first five sections are basic information about how to set formwork, then place, you know, build the formwork, uh, place the reinforcement, mix the concrete, and then you know, handling, placing, and then putting it in, in the formwork. Um, we have mandatory checklists for documents that we need to be in our CDs. We have optional uh, checklists for you know, what we need to do on specific jobs, and then we have submittals that the contractor submits to us when he starts to go to do the work. Um, one comment I have is that when we go to the spec part of the world now in ACI, we have to change license design professional to architect engineer, which might upset people who aren't architects here. Um, why do we have 563? It's because we have the, the, you know, the 562 document and it's repair of structural concrete in buildings. Um, the, the 562 is an in, in industry consensus, uh, you know, formed at ACI on the best practices for repair. Um, we benefits all by minimizing, confusing, and providing a solid fr framework for good quality projects. Um, we anticipate this is going to result in a change to the uh, stuff that Fred presented on how, you know, repairs fail and fail often. Th now, to change 301, we took 301 as a base document and have been squeezing it into the 563 document. Um, it's going to have the same format, but we're going to have to have more topics. Because a structure could be in distress when we go to repair it, we need a shoring and bracing specification. Since the structure exists now, concrete removal and prep for concrete repair is necessary. So those are the first two green chapters that we've put in there. Um, since we're going to have, in a lot of our concrete repairs, we use proprietary materials, we're going to need a, a section on that. We are developing a cut chapter on crack repair, but we're partnered with 503 on that. There's already a document prepared by a, a uh, committee called 503 that actually doesn't exist anymore. It's been taken up by another committee for crack repair. Shotcrete, uh, there's also a, a, another committee that, on shotcrete that's prepared a specification. And we're going to use, we do use shotcrete re for repair. But when we re reviewed that document, we didn't see anything that we could do to improve it. You know, it's perfectly fine. Same thing with poly polymer overlays. We're partnered with uh, 548. Then we're going to have, the first document's not going to have any of these things on the bottom, but we have other issues that we're going to have to look at when, when we go through another round. And those are corrosion, repair of architectural concrete. I mean, we're supposed to be addressing structural concrete, but there's architectural features of structural concrete in like mid-century modern buildings and others, so we probably have to have a chapter on that. Repair of precast structural concrete and repair of post-tension concrete, and et cetera. Well, for the new sections, we can start with shoring and bracing. Um, in scenarios where, you know, this first picture that she has here is, is a typical shoring that we see on a project. You know, it's just shoring up so we can do our work. But sometimes we have we come to a project where there's already been a collapse, or is in a state of collapse, and in this case, instead of having a, a document where we're going to specify a contract, a contractor hire a licensed design professional, I mean architect engineer to design it, we may design it while we're doing the inspection of the building. So that would be temporary shoring and bracing for, you know, a collapse. We also have to make provisions for pre-stress components. We're going to have to have performance requirements for shoring and bracing systems. 
supplemental requirements for a contractor for all stages of the work, and execution instructions and field quality control, same as any other uh, part of the work. And we have concrete, to moving along to concrete removal and prep for concrete repair. This is sometimes pretty foreign to people who haven't done much work in repair. And we, it really, there's different requirements in, in the CDs to do this kind of stuff. You need to have submittal requirements for surface prep, um, including water management if you're going to be using any kind of water demolition. Uh, pull off strength requirements is a Q, QAQC um, effort. Um, sometimes we do mock-ups. Uh, usually I do mock-ups. Uh, we have to look at timing of observations and criteria for acceptance of pr surface preparation. Contractual, we should develop contractual mechanisms for addressing changes in the size of repair areas. And we need to establish a limitation in depth or volume of removals without the architect engineer approval, like if we're going to take away more than a, a third of a column or something like that. And we also should look at surface profile requirements so that we can achieve bond. Uh, the other thing that we have to look at, you know, we have conventional reinforcement and concrete and their placement. Those t those sections in in, three, in uh, 563 are going to be very similar to 301. You're going to have the same thing as similar require, you know, similar requirements um, for contractors, QC program, et cetera, mock-ups, concrete type of materials, concrete curing requirements, everything else that we do. You know, when you're having a large, you know, ready mix concrete repair project. It's really not that much different than when you're doing a new structure, but when you don't have, you know, when you use the proprietary materials, you have more, of, you know, more things to look at. We work with the, the manufacturers on these kinds of things in order to work it out. Um, same kind of thing with this. You're gonna, we're going to have checklists for what kind of submittals we're going to need, acceptance criteria, what kind of field inspection we want. You know, also sometimes, and this is showing a, a, a flat slab on a parking garage, but sometimes the proprietary material, repair materials are, are in the area where we haven't gone yet, which is the architectural concrete when, we, when we're uh, fixing a facade. And there's going to be more stringent requirements on that kind of stuff. Crack repair, which Fred doesn't think you need to do a lot. But when it's bad, you have, it can be very complicated. There can be a lot of different issues. You need to know if it's if it's leaking, if it's actively leaking, if it's wet, if it leaks sometimes, is there evidence of water staining around it? Is there any kind of movement going on? Is it lengthening? Is it structural? That kind of stuff. So that, that particular part of this stuff is, is really depending on the document that's already been prepared. For um, So we're going to refer to 5037 specification for crack repair by epoxy injection. Um, the construction documents, again, would include crack locations to re be repaired and those that, that don't need to be repaired, which the architect engineer would identify, uh, QC criteria and repair requirements for core holes, submittal requirements, removal of metal ports where there is a risk of corrosion, and more uh, record keeping requirements. So probably the way we will put this in the document is sort of refer to it, but not you know, and put some of its language in there, but put a lot of reference work, uh, you know, language in there, as opposed to going through the whole thing, you know, because another com another committee is, is maintaining this, and there's no reason for us to, to change it. Shotcrete. We talked to the Shotcrete folks on 506. They're very nice. They thought it was kind of interesting that we would try to write a speci specification for Shotcrete since they have the comprehensive uh, guideline. Okay. So, uh, th again, this is going to be cross-referenced. Just same kind of things as everything else, you know. Some some stuff on bond requirements that's a little different. Now, we know that we have to do additional sections. We are we are behind on what we've been doing so far. Not too far behind, but we're a little behind. But we're going to need further time to develop this kind of stuff. You know, the architectural and precast concrete repairs, uh, corrosion mitigation systems, and PT repairs. So. We're working on it, but it's not likely to get, to get um, accomplished in this cycle. So our summary is that the original sections are being drafted. We have these partnerships with other ACI committees to, to, to uh, work out some of the stuff that's real specialized and has already been in depth covered. Um, we expect that the document will be straightforward and easy to implement. If you're already familiar with 301, it will not look any different than, than what you use already. 
And we're aligned with the 562 adoption in the IEBC, which is 2016. So we think we're going to be done 2015 so that it all can finally move together smoothly. So if you also want to read any more information about specifications and how ACI does it, you can read Cal McCall's great papers in CI on the new ACI 301 and how to develop better project specifications, which we all have access to. And if you have any questions, you can ask me or the committee secretary, Jay Paul. Thank you. 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 Th